It's telling you the meanings and the origins of the English words. So if you don't understand how to explain these the English language by using the dictionary, see, it says abbreviations. I don't know if you can see that or not. Okay, it says abbreviations used in this work. LL stands for late Latin. So for those of you who Hebrew Israelites or non-Hebrew Israelites who says that I speak English and you call the Messiah Jesus, let me get close to the screen. You are not speaking English. You're speaking Latin. Okay? You're not speaking in English. You're speaking Latin. So try something else. All right, now. So he said, verse 5, Romans 11, verse 5. Even so, then at this present time, also there is a remnant according to the election of grace. And by grace, then is no more works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then there's no more grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. Aha! See, brother, it means you're not saved by works. That's not what he's saying. And you need to slap yourself real good because you're not reading the text. Okay? He said the Mosai said that he has preserved 7,000 men according to the election of the favor of the Most High for a specific reason. Right? Because he knows all things, so he chose a nation that he knew would have a remnant left that would be saved to be the carriers of this truth. Okay? Now, so if you are a Hebrew Israelite and you have embraced this truth, then guess what? You're one of the election. As long as you hold on, right? Now, let's continue. So he said, even so, at the present time, there is a remnant according to the election of the favor of the Most High. And if by the favor of the Most High, then is no more of works. Otherwise, favor is no more favor. But of works, then it is no more of favor. Otherwise, works is no more work. Now, verse 7. What then? Israel have not obtained that which he seek for, but the election have obtained it, and the rest were blinded. Verse 8, according as it is written, Elohim hath given them the spirit of slumber eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear unto this day. And Dawid said, now verse 11, Romans 11, Dawid said, let their table be a snare and a trap and a stumbling block and a recompense unto them. You see that? This is what King Dawi, the great king, the greatest king Dawi, said. Let's read it again. He said, let their table be made a snare and a trap and a stumbling block and a recompense unto them. So that's what's happening. So the table was made a snare and a trap. What table? The ordinances, which include the feast days, the law of the Most High, is that table. What did Dawi say? He said, Thou preparest a table before me. What was the purpose of the feast days? To have a fellowship with the family and with the Most High. So he said, he prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. What does that mean? In his presence, no matter what's going on around me, in his presence is the fullness of joy and pleasure evermore. Right? Now, so he says, they, Dawi said, let their table be a snare and a trap and a stumbling block. Not only just let it be a snare, not only let it be just a snare and a trap, but a snare, a trap, and a stumbling block, and a recompense unto them. See that? Now, Dawid Shaul is basically quoting 
something that Dawid said in the book of Psalms. All right. So we're going to show you in the book of Psalms where uh, Dawid or Shaul rather is getting this quotation from. Right. So now Psalm 69 verse 22. All right. And it says we go over to Psalm 69. Okay. Verse 22. And we see what Dawid said. Verse 69 and verse 22 is what I said, right? He says, Let their table become a snare before them, that which should have been for the welfare, let it become a trap. Let their eyes be darkened, that they see not and make their loins continually to shake. Pour out thine indignation upon them. And let thy wrathful anger take hold of them. Let their habitation be desolate. And let none dwell in their tents. For they persecute him whom thou hast smitten. Now, let me say this. Non-Messianics. Who is we talking about? He said, they persecute him whom thou has smitten now he's saying somebody smit somebody that they persecuted that somebody is smitten so the most high has smitten somebody we find in isaiah 53 right he says that he's smitten right and they talk to grief of those whom thou has wounded and iniquity into their iniquity and let them not come into thy righteousness let them be blotted out of the book of the living and not be written in the righteous. But I am poor and sorrowful. Let thy salvation, O Elohim, set me up on high. So, Shaul in the 11th chapter of Romans is quoting what Dawid said in the 69th chapter of Psalms. Going back to Romans. So then he says what? Let their eyes be darkened that they may see and bow down their backs always. Verse 11. And I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? Elohim forbid. But rather... Through their salvation. Listen. He says, through their salvation, through um, through their fall, rather, salvation is come unto the Gentiles. Salvation through their fall has come to the Gentiles, man. What book are you reading from? Through the fall of Israel, salvation has come to the Gentiles. Okay? You say, well, I'm leaving New Testament. Okay, all right. Now, Isaiah chapter 11, verse 10 says, And in that day there shall be a root of Jesse, which shall stand for an ensign of the people. To it shall the Gentiles seek, and rest shall be, and his rest shall be glorious. Gentiles can't be saved. Okay, now, we haven't even got started in this lesson. I'm just scaling the surface right now. All right, now. So he says, verse 11, let's read it again. Romans 11, 11. I say, have they stumbled that they should fall? Elohim forbid. But rather, through their fall, whose fall? Israel's fall. Is come unto the Gentiles. For to provoke them the jealousy. See that? So salvation, which is what? Prosperity. Not talking about, hey, I'm saved. We're talking about salvation, which means deliverance, preservation, uh, succor, uh, aid, you know, fi financial aid, uh, health, wealth, the whole nine yards. He says, through the fall of the true natural bloodline Israelite, salvation has come to the Gentiles.
Give us a call, 312-927-4373. Then he says, I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? Verse 11, let's read it again. Elohim forbid, but rather through their fall, Israel's fall, salvation is coming to the Gentiles for to provoke them to jealousy. So when you ride around a neighborhood, you see a Gentile in a nice house, driving a nice car, all of that going to the nice schools that provokes us, the natural seed of Israel, to jealousy. And we want to know what have we done to get the tail in while they get the blessing. So look what he says. Twelve. Now the fall of them be the riches of the world and the diminishing of them be the riches of the Gentile. That's why you know you're not a Gentile. How much more their fullness? Now, let's continue. For I speak unto you Gentiles, this is Shalom talking to the sons of your fat, who are Gentile, let me say this and get this clear, is an English word, not a Hebrew word. The word for nations is goy. The translators put the phraseology, which is like a byword called Gentile, which makes reference to the sons of Yefet. That's their word. That's not the Hebrew word. That's their word. They put it. It's kind of like saying when they make reference to the Hebrew Israelites, they use the N word. And it doesn't make reference to anybody else but the Hebrew Israelites. So here, when you see the word Gentile that was put in the text, the people who translated it was letting you know that this is talking specifically about a specific son of Noah the seed of your theft. You see how this works now? So now Gentile is it, it, from the same word nations is from, which is goy or goyim. But the translators put Gentiles in certain places and put nations in other places to distinguish between the sons of your theft and the other sons. So Gentile is their word, not our word. All right. So he said, I speak to you Gentiles as much as I am apostle of the Gentiles. I magnify mine office. Uh, let's see, where I leave off at? Um, verse, um, for, yeah, verse 13. He says, I speak to you Gentiles in as much as I am an apostle to the Gentiles or the sons of your theft. That's who these Gentiles are because they wrote their name in this text to let you know this is talking about the sons of your theft. To confirm that, if we go to Genesis chapter 10, the table of nations, and we read the Gentiles, the sons of Yepheth, put their uh, signature again in the text and said in the uh, fifth verse, after we go through the sons of Yepheth, chapter 10, verse 5, he says, by these were the isles of the Gentiles divided in their lands. Everyone after his tongue and after his families in their nations. So the sons of your theft are the ones that translate the scriptures. They put Gentiles in there to let you know when we talk about Gentiles, we're talking about the sons of your theft. That's what they're saying. That's why the, the word Gentile has a significance because the people that put the word there were sons of your theft who called themselves Gentiles. Now, that clears that up, okay? So, through the sons of Yepheth is where we have all of the European nations. Esau came out of Shem. So, answer me a question. How can Edomite be the white race, as some people teach, when Esau came from Shem? Not from Yepheth. So, let me just ask, let me ask a dumb question to you all that teach Esau the white man. Then where did the other, where did the other sons fit? Where do the sons of Yefath are Gomer, which is uh, the Celtic Celtic people? Okay, where the Celtic people, the Irish, how do they become Esau if they come from Gomer? Then you have Magog Madah. 
Yvonne, Tubal, Meshach, and Tyrus. Get out teaching on the Gentile nations and explain to you who these nations are. So Gomer had Ashkenaz, which is the Ashkenazi Jew. So how are they Edomites? Then you have Riphath, Togomar, Yvonne had Elisha, Tarshish, Kittim, and Dodana, which is the Spanish and French people. So how are they Edomites? Because somebody is teaching a false teaching without looking at the scripture. To explain who these sons are. Esau came from the line of Shem through Abraham, through Isaac, Isaac's twin sons, Israel or Yaakov and Esau. So Esau didn't come from Epheth. So stop teaching that Esau is the white man because it's incorrect. Now, what they're trying to say is that the specific seed of Esau, if we read the book of Jasher, it tells you in the 90th chapter of the book of Jasher, it tells you that the sons of Chittim got together with the sons of Esau, or the daughters, I should say, and they became one people. So, sons of Chittim were, are the Greeks became one people with the Edomites. That's where you get the seafaring look, you get the Sephardim Jews and the Ashkenazi Jews, which came later on from Khazari Kingdom. So that's who they are. They are, Ashkenazi is Gentiles, sons of Yefeth the Gomer, and Edomites is a combination of Sephardi, which is Spanish, or Greeks, on the mother's side. Because when Dawi was the king, he, let me give you a reference here. Okay, let me give you a reference here in um, second cent, I think it's, uh, Second, uh, first, uh, second Samuel, I want to say second Samuel, let's see, was it second Samuel? 2 Samuel chapter 8. You can read 2 Samuel chapter 8 where it tells us that that uh, King Dawid put garrisons in Edom throughout Edom and put garrisons and all Edomites became Dawid's servants. And then you continue to read that and it tells you that he had um, let's just look at it right quick. Uh Okay, it talks about he put garrisons. Now, uh, if we go to um, 1 Kings chapter uh, 1 Kings chapter 11, where it talks about how that it said that um, 14 verse talks about how the Yah Yahweh stared the adversary of Shalomo, Hadad, the Edomite. He was the king's seed in Edom. For it came to pass when Dawi was in Edom, and Yoab, the captain of the host, had gone up to bury the slain after he had smitten every male in Edom. So, Dawi had all the males of Esau killed. Why? Because Esau kept coming back to get vengeance. So we figured we wipe out the males. We, we done with it now. We don't have to worry about this now. So Esau, but they wiped out the males. So the women became wives to the Greeks. Esau pledged allegiance with other nations to come back against the nation of Israel, right? So that's who Esau is. Esau is Esau, and the sons of Yepheth are the Gentiles. That's who they are. Two different people, right? Now, let's go back to Romans chapter 11. So Shaul said, I speak to you Gentiles, sons of Yefeth, inasmuch as I am an apostle to the Gentiles, I magnify mine office. If by means I may provoke to emulation them which are my flesh, and might save some of them. 
For the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world. What shall be the receiving of them but life from the dead? See, so see that? So, you Gentiles who have come into the knowledge of the covenant, you have a responsibility to receive Israel back. And that's why I take my hat off to these uh, uh, people who would be classified as Gentiles who have now embraced the covenant, who are now covenant sons and daughters of Abraham. They now, I take my hat off because they don't have to get out here and teach that the so-called African Americans and blacks is the nation of Israel. So they are bold in sharing this knowledge because the Most High obviously has instructed them, and that's what we, we're going to deal with the subject of the two candlesticks. And so now they are teaching this and telling other people that these people are the biblical Israelites. And now we have to have to in, uh, embrace those that are blind, who have an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying into this truth. Right. So he said, for if the first fruit, um, let's read 15 again, for if. For if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world, what shall be the receiving of them but life from the dead? See, because the world is in chaos. They're talking about they want universal peace, world peace, and all of that. You can't have world peace and the children of Israel constantly in darkness. We're the people that the Most High gave this oracle to to lead this whole thing out. You can't lead without the Most High's protocol. That's what it's about, right? For the first fruits be holy, the lump also is holy, and the root be holy, so are the branches. He's talking about Israel, right? And if some of the branches are broken off, went into captivity, sold into slavery, scattered among the nations, and thou being a wild olive tree. See that? So he said, and thou being a wild olive tree were grafted in among them and with them partakers of the root of the fatness of the olive tree. So now we got two olive trees. We got a wild olive and we got, he said that they are taking place of the root and the fatness of the olive tree. So we got the wild olive and we got the olive tree, the natural tree, right? Look at what he says. We're gonna go. And we're gonna dig deeper into this thing. It's gonna get really good. All right. Now, he says, "Boast not against the branches, but if thou boast, thou bearest not the root, or the root, as they say, we say in Chicago, but the root thee. Thou will say then, the branches were broken off, that I might be grafted in. Listen to this. Watch this now, verse twenty. Well, because of unbelief, they were broken off." And thou standest by faith, be, be not high-minded, but fear. For if Elohim spared not the natural branches, take heed lest he not spare thee. Behold, therefore the goodness and severity of Elohim on them which fell severity, but towards thee goodness, if thou continue in his goodness, otherwise thou shalt be cut off. So he said, if you continue in his goodness. So the Gentiles that came into the knowledge of the covenant had a responsibility to continue in the covenant. And they did for a period after Shaul had evangelized to them. But then they went back into apostasy, into paganism and merged the covenant of the nation of Israel that they embraced with a covenant of a Greek civilization sun worship called Zeus or Jesus, which you pronounce Jesus. So they said, and verse 23, and they also, if they abide not still in unbelief, okay, which is disobedience, shall be grafted in for Elohim is able to graft them in again. That's why when I pray, I say, I pray and I say, uh, in the prayer in the name of Yahshua the Mashiach, who came through 42 generations to engraft us back into the olive tree. Because 
Those who are without Yahshua are still outside of the olive tree. That's why they can't hear that a Gentile can be saved because they're still outside the olive tree. And they're trying to embrace this thing through identity and not through the understanding of the covenant. 